Stan Gibalisco here. I would like to explain to you exactly what is meant by the term imaginary number. You may have heard this term before and wondered, well, aren't all numbers imaginary? And in a sense, they are. When you talk about something like this, that is a numeral which represents that quantity, and we call it 5. In our particular number system, the Romans would have written it like that. These are numerals which stand for figments of our imagination, numbers. Numbers are what we use numerals to represent. So aren't numbers, since they're abstractions, aren't they all imaginary? And I guess one could argue that they are. But numbers fall into various categories. Numbers like five are whole numbers or counting numbers. Numbers like minus five fall into a category that we call integers. You've probably uh, learned all of this in your pre-algebra, but I'm building up to something here. Then we have quantities like 5 divided by 2, or 5 halves. Those are rational numbers. Any ratio of two integers is called a rational number. Except, of course, you cannot have zero in the denominator. So something like that is not a rational number. In fact, that doesn't even represent any known defined number. Just an aside about rational numbers. We call them rational because we can express them as a ratio. We don't call them rational because they are somehow less crazy than other types of numbers, which, appropriately enough, mathematicians call irrational. Now, an irrational number cannot be expressed as a ratio of two integers. An example of that is the common uh, number that we represent by that symbol, the lowercase Greek letter pi, which is the ratio of a circle's diameter, pardon me, the ratio of its circumference to its diameter on a flat surface. Or the square root of 2. That's irrational because we cannot represent it as a ratio of integers. Well, there are still other ways that we can take algebraic symbols and try to make numbers. We've already found one. 7 over 0 I went through a great deal of mental gymnastics when I was in junior high and high school and even in college trying to define division by zero because my seventh grade teacher adamantly refused to allow me to talk about it. And that made me mad. So I wanted to figure out why I couldn't divide by zero. Well, <laughs> you can sure try. And and I've uh, done a whole lot of uh, interesting stuff trying, but that isn't really the subject. You, you might call that an imaginary number. That's a really far out imaginary number. But think about something like this. We already talked about the square root of 2. What about the square root of minus 2? What can you multiply by itself to get minus 2. Or, even simpler, what about minus 1? What can we multiply by itself to get minus 1? Well, no known 
number that, uh, that we ordinarily think of in everyday life to measure quantities with, like temperature, or barometric pressure, or wind speed. None of those quantities ever turn out to be anything like that. Whatever you try, whenever you square any number that you're familiar with, known as a real number, you always get either zero, in the case of zero, or a positive number. If you try to, if one squared equals one, but minus one squared also equals one, two squared equals four, but minus 2, the quantity squared, also equals 4. You can't square any known number and get minus 1, or for that matter, any negative number. So, some mathematicians a while ago, quite a while ago, came up with the idea, well, let's just suppose that this quantity really exists. Just because we can't imagine it very easily doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So they called it an imaginary number and they defined it or they, they symbolized it by writing a lowercase letter i. Today engineers will also sometimes symbolize it by writing a lowercase letter j. That is called the unit imaginary number. Now we can multiply this unit imaginary number by any real number we want. Say, 3i. Or, and for some reason when you use j, you stick it in front of the real number coefficient. You might have j times minus 5, which they would more often write as minus j5. 7i minus 12i. All of those things are imaginary numbers. Well, what happens? Well, what makes them so, so different? Well, suppose that we decide that we want to square the quantity 2i. Now, from your algebra, you'll remember that when you want to square some quantity that's a product of numbers, the square of a product is the product of the squares. So, that equals 2 squared times i squared, which equals 4 times i squared. But what is i but the square root, or the positive square root actually, of minus 1? So, what we're going to get here is 4 times the square root of minus 1 squared, which equals 4 times minus 1, which equals minus 4. So 2i, the quantity squared, equals minus 4. Now you can start playing around with these things and you'll learn a little bit about how imaginary numbers work. So, the short answer, what is an imaginary number? An imaginary number is any real number, which we might represent as r, times the positive square root of minus 1. That is the general definition of an imaginary number. It's a little harder to imagine than real numbers, rational numbers, integers, or counting numbers, but it's really, in the, in the mathematical world, every bit as real as any other type of number. Stan Gibalisco, signing off.